We are here at Sun and Fun. I'm Dan Johnson talking with James Weeby, who has yet another design that we had to come by and look at. Seems like every show we go to, you got something new. How many designs have you done so far? I have done three so far. So three designs, James. Run through them for me. Tell me, tell me the sure. design history here. The very first design that we did was the Super Light. Super Light. Super Light, and that was the steel fuselage. And for all practical purposes, it was a clone of the Kit Fox Light. So we didn't do a whole lot of right, engineering. Which is really that. where you started the game. Yeah, we got some back. tooling. It was used to make a Kit Fox Light, and that's how we got into the ball game. Okay. From then the, what? Then we did the thing that's called an Ultra Cub, which has been out now. I think we showed it first two years ago. Okay. Believe it or not, that was our aluminum airplane. Uh, Ultra Cup is uh, cool. We wanted to go to aluminum, we wanted to get rid of the welding, we wanted to make it easier to build, we wanted to reduce costs and time, and it met the objectives. Okay, uh, that was Ultra Cup. Yep. Okay. We like that a lot. And, and now what? And we still like the Ultra Cup. You're still doing that? One? I don't okay. have enough to do. So, <laughs> uh, we designed a new airplane that we call the Pro Cub Light. And Pro Club. Pro Cub Light. Okay. Got it. Got it. That's right. And that's what we're standing in front of yeah, here. We're in front of the Pro Cub Light. Now, okay. It does share a lot in common with the Ultra Cub. Such as? The cabin is identical. Okay. So if you get an Ultra with Cub. With that aluminum, the, all the aluminum, all the lightning the holes and everything in it. Yeah, it's okay. the same cabin. Okay. Uh, but what we did was we changed the rear fuselage, the tail feathers, and the wing. And we've introduced a new common engine option to all of our aircraft. Okay. So and is that the one we're looking yeah, at right here? Yeah. And what is this? This is a Fellini. It's uh, we call it the Italian job uh, from Italy. Uh, it is a single cylinder. It's got several very interesting features. First of all, water cooled. Okay. So there's the radiator. Okay. And second of all, like all good aircraft engines, it's dual ignition. Okay. And we, you know, check each ignition just like you'd expect. Third. Gear, not belt reduction. Okay. Gear reduction in the oil. We like that. With a very lot. modestly sized gearbox. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, uh, lightweight. Yeah, it looks not, really light. Uh, for getting one here. Oh, uh, one of the best. Internally counterbalanced. It's got counterbalancing built into the design. Because it's a single cylinder, is it? Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you, it's the smoothest two stroke and even in some respects four stroke engine I've flown by. Is that right? It's smoother than uh, any. Well, I got, yeah, it, it's a smooth engine. Let's just leave it at that. And electric start as well? Of course. Yeah. And it's got a full start hidden there. If you oh, okay. the battery. If you had to uh, full start, yeah. thought about pulling that off. So we'll have to go. Yeah, electric start. It's quiet. Uh, and yeah, how much power does it put out? Well, it's a little powerhouse. It puts out 36 and a half horsepower. No kidding, really. Out of 250 cc. Wow. And, and, and what kind of RPM is it doing then? Uh, 75 to 7800. Okay, so they're getting that by by juicing up the yep. revs a little bit. Yeah, I think we're running around 2.8. That's, that's a guess, around 2.8 to 1 on the rear drive. Right? Okay. Uh, which you know gets it down to real usable speeds. Um, and I wish I could show you the, the takeoff performance. I hope you catch it. It's really pretty phenomenal. Is that right? It's a jackrabbit. So, well, this may be a new engine for you, James, but. I've seen this brand, the Polini brand, on, on pow powered paragliders and, and aircraft, very light aircraft like that. Yeah. Uh, Polini but I've has never seen it installed, I don't think, on a fixed plane. Before. I had never heard of them. I ran into them a year ago when I went to Germany to Friedrichshafen, and they had this beautiful line of engines on display stands. Talked to them and discovered the history, went to the website, discovered that they are very strong in markets that we don't touch, like powered paragliders, a uh, big brand there. They're strong in motor scooters and karting. I mean, they're just used in stuff that, that we don't see in airplane. But they were really eager to see their engine put on an airplane. Apparently, I'm about the first guy in the country who's done it, you know. So they've been using them in pusher applications. And the, the radiator is an example. Uh, more than enough cooling because they've designed it for sure, a slower sure. application. Oh yeah, sure, I see. Uh -huh. Yeah, so it was it was exciting to run into them. I saw this engine first a year ago, and here it is one year later, and it finally oh, made you're, it. Here. You're, uh, you're, you're a busy guy, as yeah. you said. So let's look at the now we've talked about the engine a little bit. The cool little engine looks very very light, yep. and that's a lot of power out of such a light and small engine with all those features you just described. Let's, let's talk a little bit more about the airplane. Now. Yeah. And one of the big changes now is the wing. Yeah. What's different about the wing? Uh, the wing is constructed from foam. 
CNC cut foam so that you look for the wing, whole wing. The entire wing is a foam wing with carbon fiber or aluminum spars. And as a result, there's no rivets. Yeah. And it's, and it's smooth. Yeah. I mean, have you ever seen a laminar flow airplane? Yeah. In the ultralight? No, yeah, no. And this is it, but we sure wish. <laughs> so we were able to do that it's just with the CNC machine. Uh, we were able to cut so much weight out of it. We couldn't do a foam wing if you couldn't machine out the foam. Yeah, yeah, sure, right. So the foam essentially is not structural. And it's really It's cool. just shape. It's shape interspersed with relatively traditional aluminum ribs that are sandwiched. But it is 100% foam from the root to the tip. Okay, but so if it's sandwiched, is it pieces of foam? Two inch pieces of foam. Two inch pieces With of a foam. little bit of half. Ah, I see, okay. So foam, 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 all the way out to the tip. And foam rib, foam yeah, like rib? Five ribs of foam followed by an aluminum rib in the sandwich. Okay. Uh, all the way out to the tip. Wow. So, and how, what kind of weight savings did that help over a conventionally built wing? None. There's no weight savings by going to foam. Okay. There's no weight loss either, but we get a real benefit in terms of build time, appearance, and aerodynamics. Okay. I think I'm seeing more foam here. Yes, you tell are me. seeing more foam. All right, tell all right. me about it. Below the line, this is a CNC cut foam. You can see all the lightning that's come out of here. Oh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't yeah. well see, but it may be hard feel. for the camera to see. But, yeah, uh, there's a channel, and this channel's got carbon fiber in it. And there's carbon fiber continuous, a carbon fiber rod on all four corners. Okay. So this has all been glued. So that's a structural and aspect of this tail cone. The loads are carried by the carbon fiber or aluminum. Yeah, that's okay. the way you want to go. So you end up with a structure. This is light. And then as we convert back over here, this is more foam. Ah, okay, this is foam just again. A great big sheet of foam that's been CNC cut. You can barely see the lightning holes. Uh -huh. What we did here is so we simply routed it out with the router and reinforced this with a little bit of carbon fiber. Okay, that's the part I'm seeing yep. up above the surface. And then here, this is there's an aluminum spar that you can't see, but it's buried in there. And this is a continuous aluminum spar, and of course the elevator is a continuous aluminum spar. These are really our light, like this thing right here, the whole way to that. Yeah, area. here's a good view, view of it there, yeah. where you can see the structure inside. It's about a two-pound part for the whole thing. Is that right? Wow. So back here, it sounds like what you're saying is the combination of foam and carbon is like it's a winner. It's absolutely a winner. We were able to do it in a way that, I mean, you know, because we had fabric covering, right. we knew we could cut it and channel it. We just used the foam to create shape, and we used the carbon fiber or the aluminum tubing to create the true load bearing structure. And that allowed us to get rid of rivets, made it easier to cover. Right? There's, it's all foam. You just pull on the Dacron and stretch it, right? And uh, looks beautiful quickly. The uh, turtle deck is also foam. This is, uh, although it's hollow, these are solid planks of foam. Okay. So we have the formers that are cut to the right shape. This is super easy to put together. You put it all together. There's like six pieces of foam that go together. Sand the edge, cover it, done. And what does this translate to in builder time? We still estimate 500 hours. Okay. We've been giving that estimate now continuously for the last three years. So talk to me about the panel here. Okay, this is a fun panel. Uh, we had a point to prove, which is you can do a really cool panel in an ultralight. There it is. What's our part of it? Our part of it lives over here. This is an airspeed indicator that any pilot, especially that would be real honest, Older pilots with aging eyes. You can't miss that. It's the that... biggest airspeed indicator. And we've got two ranges, ultralight range and up to 140 knots. Okay. Which covers probably 70 to 80 percent of the experimental market. Sure. It's our standard turn coordinator, the new digital altimeter that you looked at uh, last year. You're right, right. A G meter. Sorry, it's not turned on. And then a standard engine gauge. Uh, which in this case, look here, we've got water temperature. Ah, which, okay. That's a real thing. Ah, yeah, right. So we're looking Because at, you've got an yeah. engine now that's liquid cooled. So. Liquid cooled. And, uh, you know, it's, so this is the new story here, this uh, new airspeed indicator. Yeah, I like that. That's a nice big indicator. A quick yeah. glance at it and get something. What's, yeah. what's that showing me over there? Uh, this is set up as a fuel gauge, and I don't have any function installed there at all. Okay. We've got quite a few options for what you can do with these two. Okay. So dual fuel gauge is a good example. Okay. Uh, you know. Uh, Where is the fuel source in this airplane? I'm sitting on it. Okay. I've got a seat tank in it that we designed and built ourselves behind my back. It's a carbon fiber tank. It weighs about four pounds. Okay. Oh, 
Well, wait, how much? Uh, it holds five gallons. Five gallons, just like it should in an ultralight tank. Great. Okay, so uh, the iPad, uh, of course, we know what that can do. Um, uh, you're using just the iPad's own internal GPS? Yeah, this is uh, this is just done. We bought the uh, dock. Uh, we wanted to hook it up and show how to do, you know, glass navigation in ultralight. And so you could just pop that thing out, I'm guessing, with this yeah. up here, and uh -huh. uh, take it out and watch movies and check email. <laughs> you got it. All right. Yeah, it's all set up on, on uh, 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 cellular coverage. You can update charts. And, yeah, it's your computer. Do with it as you wish. Do with it as you By like. By the way, it. if you buy the plane, the iPad's not included. <laughs> well, Apple gets a couple of more bucks out of the deal somewhere then, so there that's good. There you go. Yep. All right. Well, um, that's a lot of information about the new Pro Cub Light from B Light Aviation, uh, B Light Aircraft, excuse me. Um, I think that's also the web address. Is that where we should go to get even more information? B Light, B E L I T E, B Light Aircraft.com. All right. And uh, will that also lead to your instrument website? Yes, it will. Okay. So we can get all that information. We've done lots of videos with you already, and we have some other information and lots of other aircraft. Available on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks a lot for joining James and I here at Sun and Fun. Incoming now looks like a Rans. No, I'm sorry, that's the D-Light. It took off a few moments earlier. That narrow fuselage reminded me of some of the tandem seating rams we've seen. I'm distracted here with young Miss Deanna Russell from Paradrenaline. Pretty gross in the airplane. She blew Florida skies.